Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we're going to get into a little bit of keto kitchen science as we experiment with caramelization on three popular sweeteners. If you've been keto for any length of time, you know that there are a ton of different non-sugar sweeteners out there. For a while, I've been promising to do a little bit of a keto kitchen science series where I look at different sweeteners, different thickeners and emulsifiers, maybe even some different flours, to see if there are any applications for which one or more of these are the best. I'm going to start with sugars, and I feel that this is probably going to be about a three-part series, because I first want to look at caramelization, which I'm going to do in this video, then I'm going to look at baking, and finally I'm going to look at how they hold up in liquid, both in terms of suspension and how they perform in colder temperatures, like ice cream, or fat bombs. Provided on any one of these videos I determine that there's a clear winner, I will follow that up the next week with a recipe or two utilizing that particular ingredient. In this video, I will be testing out my three probably most commonly used sweeteners. Bocha sweet, which probably overall is my favorite. It's the sweetest, it tastes the most like sugar, but I don't know how well it's going to perform in caramelization. Allulose. I know from experience that this caramelizes at a fairly low temperature. It's also only about 60% as sweet as sugar, so we'll see what happens there. And lastly, erythritol. I'm using the Swerve brand. There are so many different brands out there that are erythritol based. So you've got Pure Cane, you've got the Lacanto, Sucrin, um, what else is there? The King Arthur blend. All of these you look at the number one ingredient, it's erythritol. So we're just going to lump all those together and call them erythritol and test them out. For each of these experiments, I'm doing a very scaled down recipe for English toffee. So it will be the same across the board, two tablespoons of sweetener, two tablespoons of butter, and one half tablespoon of water. I'm going to heat each of these up just past 300 degrees Fahrenheit or about 150 Celsius. Then I'll pour them onto a silicone mat and see what happens. We start with our one half tablespoon of water, then we'll add two tablespoons of butter, and two tablespoons of bocha sweet. I'm going to whisk this continuously until we get to just over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. There we go. And then I will pull this off the heat and pour it onto a silicone mat. Now you'll be able to see the difference just in how these spread out for each one of the sweeteners. And the bocha sweet appears to be pretty thin. And we'll set this off to the side for about an hour to firm up. As before, one half tablespoon of water, two tablespoons of butter, and two tablespoons of erythritol. Again, we'll melt our butter and continue to whisk this until we get to just over 300 degrees. We'll pull it off the heat, Pour it onto our silicone mat, and you can see that this is a little bit thicker than the bocha sweet. And like the bocha sweet, we'll set this off to the side for about an hour. Same thing on the allulose. Our water, our butter, and I'm using the Splenda brand of allulose. Do not get confused with Splenda the stuff in the yellow packets. This is allulose, not sucralose, no maltodextrin. And as before, we'll melt this butter and continue to whisk until we get up to around 300 degrees. Now you'll notice that this is a lot foamier and it seemed to caramelize quicker. So we'll get this off the heat and onto our silicone mat. This also seems to be a bit thicker, kind of along the same lines as the erythritol. And we'll set this aside for about an hour. So first off, we have our bocha sweet, and this is not firm at all. I'm able to put little fingerprints in it. Yeah, this is not really what I would call caramel. Let's give it a taste. I do not love that. The taste reminds me a little bit of the Super Sugar Crisp cereal 
At least that's what it was called when I was a kid. Now I think it's called Super Honey Crisp. It's not like caramel, though. Um, it's not like English toffee. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm going to say Bocha Sweet, despite being my favorite keto sweetener, not good for caramelization. Next, we have our erythritol. And this... Oh! It does come right off the silicone. It's uh, kind of crumbly, though. Breaks apart very easily. We'll give it a taste. That has good flavor. Very much reminds me of caramel corn. It's, it tastes good. The problem is the texture is very crystalline. It, it crumbles apart very rapidly. Now I think that might work well in certain types of frostings, especially like something over a cinnamon roll, but you're not gonna get caramel out of this. Finally, we have the allulose. And this also is peeling off fairly nicely. Now it's kind of pliable. It could be that I took it off the heat just a little bit too soon. I'll snip off a little chunk. It's cracking a little bit. And give this a taste. Okay. Winner. First off, the texture is right on this. And the flavor is great. It's somewhere between caramel and English toffee. And I think if I were doing a larger batch where I could have a little bit more control over the temperature, I would take this up into the maybe 315 to 330 Fahrenheit range. I think that might get me that hard break that I'm looking for in English toffee. So in my opinion, we do have a clear, clear winner here for caramelization. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spend the next week experimenting with allulose in terms of can I create something that's sort of a chewy caramel sort of a treat? And also, can I create some sort of English toffee sort of treat? The Heath Bar is probably my favorite candy bar in the world. So if there's a recipe you'd like to see me make along these lines, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see if I can make it happen. So if you enjoyed this video, please tap that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, hit the subscribe button, then tap the bell and turn on all notifications. Lastly, if you'd like to help support the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, hit that join button and see what memberships and perks are all about. Thanks for watching.